Um, so, you know, I'm originally from uh, Oakland, California. Um, I uh, got my start in education and community organizing, social justice, things like that. Um, and then I moved to Los Angeles to become a stand-up comedian. About 18 months ago, um, I had a near-fatal motorcycle accident. Uh, I got hit over on Ventura Boulevard and, um, you know, went through the motion. Did that, you know, it was a good chance I was going to die and blah, blah, blah. Um, and my mom, who's, who is a single mom, um, when I was growing up, came out to take care of me and, you know, nurse me back to health. I was in a wheelchair for a long time. And, um, you know, we got closer, you know, like, obviously I had become an adult and, um, you know, whatnot. And then about three weeks after that point, um, I'm sorry, six weeks after that point, uh, she got uh, diagnosed with terminal cancer. And so I had, it, in this very short amount of time, myself and, you know, the person I was closest with both are, you know, essentially being told you're going to die. Um, and, you know, this really put some, put, put a thought in my mind, put a, um, a, a panic, if you will, um, and a concern. And I, I, I just had to figure out how to solve this problem, you know? And so I began researching how you could keep somebody alive digitally, you know, it, what's, what's the way you could do this. And as I researched, there wasn't anything there. There was scrapbooks and, you know, social media type things. And I was like, this isn't good enough. You know, this isn't good enough. And so that began the journey. I had savings from work and COVID was just starting to hit. It was just the beginnings of it, you know? And uh, I said, I can figure this out. And so I went through this whole process and, you know, eventually landed on what, what everybody else was doing wrong, in my opinion, and what I think will end up being the revolution of this kind of technology is, you know, everybody else keeps trying to build a universal person, a universal, a universal version of you or me. And there's no such thing. We and I are 50 different people, 100 different people. Um, and, and it's like, Justin, when he's with Joy, is one person. Justin, when he's with his wife, is another person. Justin, when he's with his mother, is another person. Yet we're trying to like say this is just Justin for everybody. There is no Justin for everybody. So, and I, I just want to acknowledge to the listeners, it, you know, I understand it's scary and different, you know. Other people are trying to do stuff with images and videos and recreate this and get that. What I really focused on, what I realized was, you know, what is it most I would miss about my mom when she goes? And for me, it was talking to her. It's communicating. It's call your mom. Ask your mom a question. You're having a hard day. Call your mom. I said, who gives a shit if it's a great video image and her voice sounds right and blah, 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 if her personality is not there? And so what we do is we archive the conversations between me and my mom, all the communications, text messages, phone calls, video calls. Um, and then we take those and we run proprietary algorithms through them and we figure out what the dynamic of our relationship is. So if even if her virtual avatar or my virtual avatar, when one of us passes away, doesn't know the answer to a question, our personalities will be right. The dynamic will be right. So for my mom, I'm like, Ma, what are you talking about right now? I don't know what you're saying. Like, that's that's a more appropriate re answer than yes, I remember this thing from 19, you know, 99. Like, no one wants to hear that. No, no. But if you, you know, I mean, and you're from Brooklyn, so you know, like, like if if you ask somebody you care about from back home. Hey, remember this thing in high school? And they're like, what are you talking about? That's what you expect, not the exact answer. We're mapping personalities. We're figuring out digitally how to recreate people's personal dynamics, how their personality shows up 
with an individual. So that's a great question. And it's the simplest thing in the world for the user. You communicate, like always. So the UV app is a messenger app like all the other ones. You can text, make phone calls, make video calls. You do your normal thing. That's it. That's all you have to do. There's no, there's no like a uh, special recipe, blah, 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 blah. That's, we take care of all that. So you go about your day, daily life. You mm -hmm. move your communications over to you for the people that you want to preserve and done. Uh, we have in-app purchases where you can help speed the process along, you know, in cases like with my mom who has cancer, um, you know, I was like, okay, well, what if we don't have enough time to get enough communication in for the, to the algorithm to really work? So you can do personality assessments, you can do activities together, you can do tests together. Those are all coming into the app as well to help move the process along. And the other cool thing is you can see the process. So like we have like an indicator that shows you like what what level your av your avatar is at with this person. So mm -hmm. and and as you do things, as you do activities, or as you make more phone calls, you have more conversations. You'll see it grow and progress. It gives you idea of how quality it's going to be as you go. However, you do it now. Just if one if one of you passed away that other person would be there in the group function digitally, just like they always were. And beyond that, if, if, that, if that seems crazy, we're also developing and have patents on uh, augmented reality. So you could, pair, you could put on a pair of like uh, augmented reality glasses um, and be at an actual family function and that deceased person's there, they're interacting, they're talking, you can hear them, they're sitting at the table with everybody and it's, just like they were never gone. I grew up poor. I grew up in a rough household. I grew up in a working class neighborhood. Um, and I had to kind of fight my way up to, to everything I had, honestly, and everything I accomplished. And so when I was looking at my mom dying, and, and you've had this experience, you know, it's, it's the, the worst thing you can imagine. You know, it's it's the worst thing that you can picture. It's something that every person fears almost their whole life. Like, um, and for me, whenever I was afraid, I fought. So mm -hmm. I'm like, big dudes cornering me. Well, I'm gonna fight because I'm 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 not going out like this. You know, those those always my mentality. You know, you want to fire me from a job? We'll just wait and see. Like I'm gonna you know, turn this around and you won't, you'll have to give me a raise afterward. You know, this is always my mentality, you know, when right. negative stuff approach me. And that's very much, you know, a cultural thing of like, you know, people joke about like come from the school of hard knocks, but it's, it's for real. You know, there's people in this world who get knocked down a lot. And if they make it, you know, and they make it out of that, then life is a lot less scary. And so for me, like, I was like, oh, I know what it's like to be scared like this. I'm fighting. Like, I'm going after this. And, you know, it's amazing. Like, when I first started doing it, people were telling me I was crazy. And they're like, you're loco. This is crazy. What are you talking about? You know? And I just kept like, it can be done. I can think about it. You know, mm -hmm. personalities like this, personalities like that. I started doing research. I have a background in psychology. I'm like, this is this, this is this. Why can't we do this? I don't know. Like, then I start talking to engineers and they're like, oh, it's too complex. And I was like, no, it's not. Look, if you just do like this and like this and like, huh, oh yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. And then I just keep getting smarter people and smarter people. And I'm like, yo, I don't understand how to do this. I'm not <laughs> a programmer, but I bet you do. Cause here's what I want to do. And then I find one person who could do this, one person who do that. And before I knew it, all of a sudden people are like, oh, we could have this ready in 18 months. And then it was, we could have this ready in six months. And then all of a sudden, you know, people are like, you'll never get people to invest in that. And all of a sudden people like, as we get moving, as patents start getting granted, which is so hard, uh, people start perking up and be like, oh shit, like he's got some of the top data scientists in the world working with him. And the US government just said that no one else has this idea, not, you know, not the big boys, not these folks over here. And, and then all of a sudden it starts kind of compiling on top of it, uh, off of it. And so now for me, 
my mind naturally goes like, this is done. We're doing this. It's happening. It's going to occur. Now I'm already start thinking about next steps. The biggest next step is using the proprietary technology we have is uh, really taking it to the next level to power lots of new technology. So mm -hmm. eventually um, I envision a world where, you know, we can replicate human bodies through robots. You know, you see this ro these robotics that are occurring now and they're getting more and more real, more and more. So what if we could take our technology where you have this very authentic version of this person and you're able to put somebody's uh, deceased husband into an animatronic, robotic, lifelike person that talks, walks, whatever, and it's being powered by a very authentic personality. Brings us to this point where you're like, is death even real anymore? You'll be surprised. So one of our uh, our executives in business development, he's a doctor of theology. He's a devout Christian, very close in the spiritual community. Um, our CMO holds church in our backyard. Um, I was raised very, very religious. Uh, we don't we don't see it as replacing a soul, usurping God or changing that. What we look at it is really simple. So if you're very religious and you believe people go to heaven, well, that's great. They're in heaven, but you don't have to be in hell down here without them. They're still here. So their soul's off in heaven. They're doing their thing up there waiting for you, but you still get to have conversations with them every day and be comforted knowing that this is authentic. This is what they'd say. This is how you guys interact. And the other thing I say is you could give me the greatest naysayer in the world and the most freaked out person in the world. And I, I lay it down in the most simplest of terms. You may not want to have a conversation really with your deceased loved one, but I guarantee you in the moment when you lose them and when you're processing that, if I gave you the option, you'd want to keep the option. You'd want to know you could, even if you're so like, this is weird, it's freaky, it's creepy. Knowing that you could, no one's going to say no to that. I just don't believe I couldn't, you know? Um, and so for me, like a lot of what we're doing in, in our first phase for our users is get that information to us, start those communications do the in, in app, uh, you know, quizzes and assessments, because it'll leave you the option. It'll mm -hmm. always give you the option. If you give us the building blocks and we can just hold them for you. And so even that, I think, will be a huge comfort to folks who are like, no, I don't want to digitally communicate. I'll know in the back of my head. But we feel very strongly that 99.99% .99 of people will say, but leave me the option. I applaud you for this. I think this is brilliant. And it does take a long time to get a patent. So that's you should be really proud of yourself for that. Yeah, thank you so much for all those kind of words. We actually, we actually got our, our first patent in under nine months. Um, and then we got our second one in under 12. Um, so we're, we're cooking with, we're cooking with fire. Um, uh, one thing I do want to say is you absolutely hit it on the head. I think it gives people tremendous peace knowing like when they're dying, um, that they'll still be able to be around for those that they're leaving behind. That, yeah. that like people aren't going to be lost without them. They'll still be there. They'll still be able to give their input. They'll still be able to be there on their wedding day. You know, my mom, uh, I'm going to get emotional right here. My mm -hmm. mom went in for radical surgery six weeks before I got married. And, you know, one of her biggest fears was she wasn't, I, that she wouldn't be at my wedding, you know? Um, and she wouldn't get to see me be a dad and wouldn't get to, to see me have kids and talk to her grandchildren. And now knowing that she will, no matter what happens. Like my grand, my kids will know her. Yeah. They'll know who she is. She'll be able to give them advice. She'll be able to keep giving me advice, keep guiding me. I think that takes a huge part of the fear of it, of, you know, what what that entails. And and I think as we progress as a society and as human beings in general, we'll really start a question of like, what is this whole concept of consciousness? The brain's a gigantic computer. We're just we're just looking at the different parts and components and neural pathways 
and we're trying to recreate it and everybody's in a race to do this. And, and I think what we're doing is very unique in that we're not looking at the hardware, we're looking at the dynamicism of the hardware. And that's what's what I think is really cool. Creating groundbreaking technology and one of the most complex things to do is just build an app, you know, build it right, make it simple. We understand that there will eventually be a lot of younger folks getting older folks on it. So we were trying to be conscientious about this is not overly complicated. It works the same way other stuff does. So if folks want to be in for the first version, which will be a chat app, um, you just go to my, M-Y, Y-O-V.com, myyov.com, um, and you can sign up and be on the list and be the, some of the first people that they get to start using the app and start archiving your yourself and your loved one. Thank you so, so much for this. Um, everything comes in its time and its place, you know? So now that we have this amazing opportunity to feel comforted, because I think that's the key to be able to feel like that presence is there with me. That's a blessing and that's a gift. So thank you for your gift to humanity. And for those who want to share in that gift, I hope they understand the joy it would bring them. So again, thank you so much. 